Hello, it is March of the Mammoth time. Uh, this is an event hosted by uh, Alex at Big Owl Books, uh, Jason at Old Blues Chapter and Verse, and Lukash at uh, Cruel Reader's Thesis, where they encourage you to take up at least, <laughs> at least one 800 plus page book in the March, in, in March, and read it, not to be uh, daunted by super gigantic books. And there is a, this, this is a very, very wide open thing. Uh, on one side, you have Al, who I think has a stack of about three or four um, mammoths that she's very ambitiously going to read all in the, in, in the month of March. I think that's her plan. Uh, and then there's uh, someone like Jason, who uh, quite proudly says he is somebody who has never ever actually finished his uh, his mammoth in March. Indeed, it usually takes him a good ways through the year to uh, actually finish it, but he starts it in in March, and that's and get, you get to have kind of that very kind of rewarding read. So this is a this is a, one of these read alongs that is not it's not a read along. It's a reading challenge where you get to pick the book which uh, is open to every level of reader. I'm far more on the Jason side of things. <laughs> way i'm i stand with jason in, in like yeah march goes by the, the various other months go by before you actually maybe finish your mammoth but the big thing is you start it in march you maybe have a really good concentrated read in march to get you really really deep into a, a book and that just lovely thing of getting lost in a book uh and something about being a, a gigantic book is is allows you to for it to expand and expand sort of suck you in and take up and it becomes your your whole world uh is 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 one of the big joys big joys of reading i did not know i still don't i, I did not know whether i wanted to actually participate this year i think a lot of people have the same thing of how much energy you have at this point <laughs> how many spoons <laughs> teaspoon quarter quarter teaspoon 16th teaspoon? I don't think it was a 16th teaspoon. Um, but yeah, so, but I decided, okay, it's March 1st. Let's, let's find a book. Let's find a book. Uh, and, um, because I'm doing this so half-assed, just books out of my various, the various books that I have here, pick, pick one, which makes it pretty easy. Uh, there's long books that are on, um, various various piles that i have which are too short these are pikers uh, i think only like 600 or 700 pages long they don't make make match they don't uh, meet that 800 plus they, that 800 plus um bar that uh they that the um hosts have have they're they're probably really suggesting they're not going to be mad at me they wouldn't have been mad at me if i'd picked up one of these and read that in march but you know you i you get that kind of obsessive I want to follow the rules kind of thing and so it's like I'll put I'll put those ones I'll put those ones aside to read or to read at some other point uh another possibility might have been Patricia Highsmith's uh her diaries and notebooks 1941 to uh, 1995 which has a really I've only really just looked at kind of the apparatus around it and it seems like it's like really well done that this isn't one of these uh, journals and diaries where you just get dropped in and you have no idea who it is there's little essays and stuff like that and little biographies sprinkled throughout to kind of bring you up to speed so you know who these people are in Patricia Highsmith's life uh, it's a library book so there was no way I was going I was actually going to you know finish finish reading this or I, I, I basically got out of the library to kind of take a look at it I vaguely thought about, oh, maybe I just buy the ebook for uh, the March of the Mammoths because I think whatever book I do get, I will end up getting an ebook copy of. Uh, at the moment, this is hot off the presses, so the ebook is like the ebook is like thirty seven bucks. So that is made that is something for another time for when this becomes a paperback and suddenly that electronic book goes down in price to match the now the now paperback price of of this particular tome people should get paid but other people need to watch their pennies especially when lots of construction and other things is going going on in the house so that eliminates that eliminates the other another big book that leaves me with uh two books uh two books that have made appearances i think probably in this uh in this in this uh the march of the mammoths before 
Uh, one of them is A Place of Greater Safety, uh, Hilary Mantel, uh, all centering around the uh, French Revolution. 1789, as revolution sweeps through France, three obscure young men step into the harsh light of history. So another historical novel by Hilary Mantel, uh, this predating her uh, the, the Wolf Hall, the, her, uh, Cromwell, her Cromwell trilogy. So there's that. It is definitely... It is definitely a chunker. It is 872 pages. I think I bought it at the height of my Hilary Mantel enthusiasm. And uh, the, thus, <laughs> as I exhausted myself, not exhausted myself, but gorged myself on Hilary Mantel uh, a couple of years ago, um, I put this aside because I was gorged on Hilary Mantel. So that is, that is the one choice. And the other one is uh is definitely one of my highlights from one of uh, a uh, from a mammoth past which is the master of hest hest vinken by sigrid unset which i read uh a i read a while ago <laughs> as i said in a mammoth for kristen lavin's daughter which i really really love so those are my two choices. Those are the two books off of my bookshelves that are that hit hit past the um, that 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 level. Um, so yeah, this is this is like nine hundred ninety four pages. So not too horribly ambitiously past the eight hundred mark. But I don't know which one which one I want to read. I, I worry about what what's translation going to be like in this one, and maybe it's like, oh, am I going to get is that could be too much mantel for me to handle. So let's do, uh, let's take uh, uh, inspiration from another great booktuber, uh, Sean the Book Maniac, who, did, who does the 112th page uh, tag or challenge or whatever, where you, you pick up a book, you read page 112, you kind of talk it out, you say, oh, is this a book that would be, interest me? And go from there. So I'm going to read both, both of them. Uh, the, the traditional 100 page 12 tag, you don't actually uh, know what book you are reading. Uh, obviously in this one, we, 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 I've let the cat out of the bag there. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, so what's here? I'm going to, oh, I'm going to start, I'm going to cheat in page 111, start the paragraph. And because it ends on a chapter a chapter break and then there's a little bit of the next chapter so i'm gonna i'm just gonna read the end of this chapter so what is actually let's give you a little hint on uh the master of hest hestvinken which um what is this what the nobel prize winning author succeeded in doing is to transport the reader directly into the medieval world of 13th century norway a world of harsh violence and haunting beauty swift brutal action soaring spiritual questioning Again, against a magnificently evoked background of unspoiled nature in a society ruled by blood, fealties, and God-fearing Christianity, we follow the drama of a proud, powerful, impetuous man, the beautiful, vulnerable woman whom he loves despite her betrayal of him, the son they raise, and the awesome destiny that they attain, which really, uh, it's very dramatically put, but that sounds like very much familiar uh, territory with uh, Kristen Lavin's daughter, which is also a historical novel. Uh, set set in uh, similar similar times, um, I don't know exact times, but yeah, similar times, historic times, ye olde times. So yeah, let's read the first. Let's read the first little bit of um, the Master of Hest of Incan. I'm probably going to say that about five different ways in this video. The bishop had not been able to get any satisfaction from the lady Mag Magnhilda Hild. She would give no opinion as to what had happened as the th at. She she would be she would give no opinion as to what had happened at the thing that time. She was inclined, indeed, to believe that her son, her that her brother had thought the marriage between Olav Andensen and one of her daughters at one time, in any case, but never, never, but but never that the match was made and settled. But Tor Vic declared that he was sure of it. Stenefin and Odin concluded a bargain about their children that evening. They had given each other their hands on it, and Tor himself was the one who had struck the bargain. He named three or four men who had, wit who had witnessed the taking of the hands, and who were still living, so far as he knew. What agreement was made as to the settlements he knew not, 
but he had heard the men discuss it on a latter day, and even remembered that Unson Ingelson, Ingelson, Ingelson were not hear of an equal division of property unless Stinfin increased his daughter's dowry a good deal. My son will be much richer than, than Steinefin, Odin had said. During Advent, Ardvid, Ardvid went home to his farm in Erdefall for a space, and Olaf went with him. Olaf had not been there since he was a little boy. Now he came as the master's friend and equal, looking about him with discerning eyes, and put his words as a man who himself had one thing and another on his hands. Here Arnavid's mother ruled supreme, and she received Olaf with both hands, since he, she had upset Kolbein's plans for Ingun. For she sincerely hated Kolbein, and all the children her brother-in-law had had with his leman. Mistress Mistress Hildbjorg was a proud and handsome woman, old as she was, but there seemed to be a coolness between her and her son. Arvid's children were three petty, fair-haired boys. They take after their mother, said Arvid. Olaf was well pleased with the thought that he would be master himself when he came home to Hestevenken. Just before Yule, the friends returned to the town. Arvid wished to keep the feast there. All right, that's the first little first little snippet from the master of Hestevinken, which uh, <laughs> I kind of somewhat stumbled over the language there. I mean, I'm not going to get, I, I do not know how to say Swedish Norwegian, Norwegian names. So there's, it's not surprising there. Seemed a little bit choppy. Definitely. You know, this is an older translation, a little on the dry side. I just in that little, that little click, section of it so yeah okay okay so yes let's go on to a place of greater safety by hillary mantel which is you know hillary great english novelist hillary mantel and uh all about you know, french revolution okay lucille she spent all the time she could alone she read she reread la nouvelle heloise a year, a year ago, when she'd first picked up the book, Camille had told her he had a friend, some odd name, began with an R, who thought it was a masterpiece of the age. His friend was an arch-sentimentalist. -sentiment they would get on well, were they to meet. She understood that he himself did not think much of the book and wished a little to sway her judgment. She remembered him talking to her mother of Rousseau's Confessions, which was another of those books her father would not allow her to read. Camille said that the author lacked all sense of delicacy, and that some things were better not committed to paper. Since then, she had been careful what she wrote in her red diary. She recalled her mother laughing, saying, You can do what you like, I suppose, as long as you retain a sense of delicacy. Camille had made some remark she barely heard about the aesthetics of sin, and her mother had laughed again, and leaned towards him, and touched her his hair. She should have known then. These days she she was remembering incidents that, like sh these days she was remembering incidents like that, turning them over, pulling them apart. Her mother seemed to be denying, as far as one could make out what she was saying at all, that she had never, that she had ever been to bed, that she had ever been to bed with Camille. She thought her mother was probably lying. Annette had been quite kind to her, she thought, considering the circumstances. She had once told her that time resolves most situations without the particular need for action. It seemed a spineless way to approach life. Someone will be hurt, she thought, but in, ev but every, way I, but in every way I win. I am now a person of consequence. Results trail after my actions. She rehearsed that, that crucial scene. After the storm, a struggling beam of late sun had burnished a stray unpowdered hair on her mother's neck. Her hands had rested confidingly in the hollow of her waist. When Annette whirled around, her whole face had seemed to collapse, as if someone had hit her very hard. Camille had half smiled. That was strange, she thought. For just a moment, he had held on to her, mother, on to her mother's wrist, as if reserving her for another day. All right. Well, uh, much easier to read, much more sucking me in. 
I think that sort of, to me, that decides it uh, between the two. I, I think I will. I loved Kristen Lavin's daughter. Um, I will probably come back to this and see, you know, maybe that was just a rough part of the translation. But this immediately, immediately hits me as as a book where, you know, you've got Rousseau, you've got kind of interesting kind of um, social dynamics between a uh, character and her, and her mother, what's her mother is, what her mother is up to. Uh, yeah, yeah, this, this seems like uh, it would be the book, the book to read. So I guess it is going to be a Hilary Mantel month, uh, possibly more. I will probably uh, take a look and see. I've, I've got, obviously, I've got this lovely, lovely, uh, it's, what is it? It's called Matchbook matchbook uh, press i think is what they what it's called uh which has um what is it inspiration for the cover of this book was taken from matchbooks shown here uh in altered colors originally produced by in eastern europe in the 1960s every effort has been made to credit the artist but at this time of the printing no credit could be sourced so yeah there's a little there's a little uh matchbook on at the, at the back there reproduction of it and indeed they have here a little thing of the matchbook, which I, you know, is for writing, lighting fires in your, uh, in uh, your, your fires in your fireplace. I'm sure not to light any nasty, nasty, horrible cigarettes. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to be doing this and I'll try and see if I can't track down, uh, see, see how much the ebook e is for it. So I can kind of bounce back and forth between paper and ebook. Just that way I can get, I can have more of a concentrated, uh, experience of reading in March. Yeah. And, and indeed that's probably my, my thought is to, is to really buckle down and read, 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 uh, get the ebook, get the ebook. And probably the other thing is to sort of, uh, I don't know if tone down is the right word, but, uh, rap radically, uh, scale back all my other media during, during the month. I just really just be be with a book for this month and uh i i know that the days that i can i settle down and i just i i give myself over to a book and i read i feel a lot better <laughs> i feel a lot better versus uh you know being 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 the viewer on uh social media which i mean i guess this is social media as well but yeah that's my plan so yeah a place of greater safety by hillary mantel my march of the mammoth all right. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Lukash. More videos later.